You've made it through Halloween. Now try and survive Christmas. This is your festive look at the NECA Toys Silent Night Deadly Night Retro Cloth Billy Chapman. Years after witnessing his parents' murder by a robber in a Santa suit and then being raised in an orphanage by an abusive mother's superior, the tormented Billy goes on a murderous rampage dressed as Santa Claus. Punishment is necessary. Before we get a closer look at Billy Chapman again, as we've already had a look at this guy on this channel before, first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure actually stands. Now, because he's using the same retro cloth body underneath the Santa Claus outfit, translates to the figure being the exact same height as most retro cloth figures. I guess you could say he's a little bit taller because of the styling of his hair. But nonetheless, though, Billy Chapman stands 8.5 or 8.5 inches in height. Switching that quickly to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing 21.8 centimeters tall. Now, originally, Billy Chapman, the retro cloth release, was exclusive to a Scream Factory collaboration with NECA Toys. If you pre-ordered the deluxe version of Silent Night, Deadly Night on Blu-ray, you got yourself a poster, you got a brand new slipcover artwork, and you also got yourself the retro cloth release of Billy Chapman. That was the only way he was available. Then later on, NECA Toys re-released this guy in a clear clamshell, which was available in stores. So you may have, like myself, the original Scream Factory release, or you were lucky enough and got the retail release of Billy Chapman, which I'd still like to pick up. I don't think much has really changed. The accessory count is about the same, I would imagine. But I wonder if perhaps the paint on the face has been improved, because it's really one of the setbacks I find on this particular figure. It's the paint. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Ironically enough, Ricky Caldwell, his brother, with a different last name, of course, was also an exclusive to Scream Factory, released with Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. Up to this point, as far as I know, he's still an exclusive. He's never gotten a re-release, so he's a little harder to come by. I think Billy Chapman's a little easier and a little less expensive to pick up nowadays. Anyways, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure. The first thing we'll have a look at is the axe. This is the axe he pulls from Ira's department store, Ira's toy shop. And he, of course, kills a few people with that. He doesn't really kill anybody in the toy shop. He actually uses this later on to kill people. Uh, the only accessories that I feel he also could have come included with was the box cutter that he dispenses Pamela with. Because punishment is necessary, Pamela. And then he doesn't also come with the bow and arrow that he kills Mrs. Randall with. Those are two accessories I really wish that the figure could have actually come included with. I don't know if there's enough interest personally in the character of Billy Chapman to warrant NECA Toys re-releasing this guy or giving us an ultimate version of this guy. But if they did, I think a box cutter would be much appreciated, as well as the bow and arrow that he kills Mrs. Randall with. Ironically, Mrs. Randall was played by, I think it was Nancy Borgenich, who was also the person that was escorting Michael Myers out at the beginning of Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers, just in case you didn't know that. Anyways, though, with some information aside, let's get a closer look at the axe. The axe has been polished rather nicely, adding this clear coat to it. So the normal silver that would be on the surface of the head of the black axe, the silver now shines because it's been given this clear coat finish over top of it. The only setback I find with the axe is while the blood is a nice touch, they've used two different colors of blood red. Um, it kind of comes across like it's just been dolloped on there, just touched with a paintbrush. I feel like if he's swinging this and killing people, that the blood likely should be smeared across the surface and not necessarily just dollops of it. It's just a little small nit nitpick of mine. I just like the fact that he does come included with the axe. The touches of detail also are nice by the little streaks of black that they've added to the handle. So it's not just the regular handle. If you do want to display it in Billy's hand, you can do actually one of two things. You can either put it in one of his hands, either one of them, because either one hand actually holds the axe perfectly fine. Or when this guy does come out every holiday season and I put him on my mantle, what I'd like to usually do is, because he does have gripping hands on both sides, 
is I like to take the axe, feed it from the beginning on one. It's a little broader on the end of the handle, but just navigate that through the opening on his one hand, feed that all the way through, and then connect it, attach it to the other hand, and, and other hand right there. And you can actually have him holding it in both hands. You can still sort of pose it to the point where you can bend his elbow if you want to make it look like he's just ready to kill, perhaps, Mother Superior. Oh, I wish he could have killed Mother Superior. Uh, but that is his one accessory, his one weapon. Could he have come included with the box cutter? Most definitely. Could he have come included with the bow and arrow? I'm not as disappointed that he didn't come with the bow and arrow. I just wish he could have come with the box cutter as well. But that's what he looks like with his axe. That doesn't happen to be his only accessory, of course. He looks a little unfinished up at the top here. It's almost like he needs a Santa hat. And luckily, he does come included with one. Looking at the said Santa hat, it's a traditional Santa hat, of course, folded over to the side there in the pom-pom done in white, as well as the fur trim, also done in white. Nice texturing that they've actually put to the fur as well as the hat itself. So it does look like you could imagine, if you will, that it's made of a material. Now, when you do fit this on Billy's head, I think normally you would just expect to put it on this way. and That doesn't quite work. Also, if you spin it around the other way and try to fit it down, it doesn't really work. It actually it goes the opposite way. You'll spin it to the point where the fur is the only thing you're really looking at and trying not to drop it, of course, in the process. You'll see that there's these little grooves. See these little areas that's rounded at the bottom well it actually fits right on the tops of his hair so you just feed it on like this and this middle section here just sits in between sort of the part on the santa hair there and it doesn't stay on well enough i mean if you tilt the figure it's going to fall off but it stays well enough that if you're just having the figure standing on display you really don't have any issues with the hat falling off does it stay on securely no but a lot of times you're probably not going to be tilting the figure upside down. I guess you could, oh, well, there you go. If you apply just enough pressure, um, it does survive the blizzard test. Okay, so those are his two accessories. And obviously does finish the look rather nicely by adding the Santa hat on top of his head. Let's talk the one stumbling point when it comes to this figure. And for this, I'm going to actually want to bring in the packaging so you guys can see the difference between the two. This is sort now. This is the figure. This isn't a picture of the real Billy Chapman from the movie. This is actually the way the figure was supposed to look, and this is what we ended up getting. Now, there's no arguing the fact that that's still the same head sculpt. The body is exactly the same. There's nothing that's been changed short of painting it the way that they did. Where this one had a whole lot of additional red around his cheeks. You saw some additional brown around the areas of his lips and darker areas around his eyes to really accent those. Unfortunately, a lot of that gets so overlooked when it comes to the figure's actual release. Now, obviously, this that would have been his original promo shot. This guy then gets mass-produced. And when you mass-produce a figure, sometimes stuff gets sacrificed. And unfortunately, the one thing that got sacrificed here for Billy Chapman's face is not necessarily the sculpt. The sculpt is really good. It's the muddiness of unnecessary paint that's been applied to the... It almost seems like they've applied too much of it. And this reminds me a bit of like the Herbert West, the reanimator retro cloth figure that we also had a look at where I had the same issue. It was a good head sculpt, but just unnecessary amounts of paint and almost just not enough contrasting paints that it came across like he was almost wearing like a foundation on his face. I mean, the darker areas around his lips, lips are almost completely gone. The darker colors around his eyes are also omitted completely. It sort of just has one neutral coloring to it, short of maybe just a little bit of pink on the sides of his face. Uh, it's the, really the one thing that disappoints this figure, lets it down. And one reasoning why, I did again, I did want to pick up the clamshell retail release to see if they may have fixed this along the ways. If they haven't, I certainly think that if they already have this figure's mold in their inventory, re-release this guy for a following Christmas season. And hopefully through that, they can then fix up some of the real serious issues that plague this figure. Primarily, it's just the paint in the figure's face. Checking out the rest of the figure's body, though, I guess we can go back and discuss his beard, which, like in the movie, the majority of his beard sits below the point of his chin. The only real time that he's actually got the mustache part of his beard across his face is when he's sitting down with the children. The rest of the time, especially when he goes a-slaying, the majority of his beard drapes below his chin. 
A lot of that probably has something to do with the fact that they didn't want him to look like Santa Claus in the movie because the movie was getting a lot of negative feedback. Parents were picketing to have this movie removed. They obviously wanted to probably make the character look more like he was posing as Santa and not really as Santa. That's my guess, at least. So like I said, the majority of the beard, all plastic, of course, this headpiece, as well as the hair is all one unit. It's not separate from itself. And when it comes to articulation, that does limit things a little bit. The beard is primarily all white, and because it's got a slight shininess to it, it comes across like it's melted marshmallow. And while I do think it should have still remained white, I felt there was also an opportunity missed that they didn't add some darker color in there, just to break it up and add a little bit of much-needed volume. Uh, yes, it is white in the movie, but it doesn't mean that they couldn't have added just a little bit of darker contrasting colors so that the strands of hair didn't look like they were all just congealed together. Just quickly looking at the back of his hair so you can see all that. Very nicely sculpted, but again, I just really feel like there's not enough additional coloring added to it. Lighter and darker colors of white, more, I guess, closer to gray, could have been added in there, not to the point where it made the, the hair look gray, but just enough to add a little bit of extra contrast. Now, looking at the rest of his body, underneath this is retro cloth. It's just your traditional retro cloth body. He's very spindly. And you could say that he probably could have needed some much needed filling out. And I probably would agree with you. In the movie, of course, he's wearing a Santa Claus costume. But the additional padding actually comes to his benefit when he's fighting people. Denise's boyfriend, for example, is clubbing him around in the house. And it's the additional padding that really does protect him. In this case, while you get fuller sleeves and a fuller jacket, there really isn't enough padding underneath all this to fill this out. I've considered actually dismantling this figure, putting in a couple of little things of maybe cotton batting inside around the arms and around the areas of the torso, put the jacket back on. I haven't done that though. I'm worried especially about when it comes to his belt, how easy the belt is to remove. It doesn't look like it actually comes off. It looks like it's glued in place. To pry this off, I could probably glue it back in place, but maybe that might be more harm than doing good. I do think it could have used some additional padding just for the fact that he's a fuller looking character in the movie. He's not full as a as an actual body underneath that. He's just a regular fit boy. But he really did need a lot of additional padding when I think it came to his costume. That being said, I do like the fact that they used kind of a real fur material, similar to what you would expect to see in a regular co costume for Santa Claus. They've got it on the cuffs of his sleeves. They've got it on the belt areas. Uh, the pocketed areas just below the belt, I should say. And of course, they've got it along the bottom area here and also the area around his boots. Uh, the material is pretty good, but again, I just really feel like a lot of much needed padding needed to be added to this. Something I could do myself, or if they release this guy down the road, I feel like they probably could have added like a fat suit or some additional batting underneath this just to bulk him up a little bit. Looking at his gloves, now that we've got the axe removed, the gloves are really decently painted. They look like the way that they were in the movie, like grimy, like this is near the end when he's about to confront Mother Superior. You can see how discolored and dirty those gloves have gotten. Underneath this, of course, is all your traditional retro cloth body. I mean, again, it doesn't need to be anything else but that. Could they have given him a bigger, bulkier build? Why would they? I mean, they just add a costume over top of it. That's additional costs involved. Of course, we can look at his boots as well. Now, they do sadly still result in having a straight hinge joint for the ankle. You can't do anything else more than that. But I do like the fact that they gave them brand new boots instead of going to those go-tos that they usually do when it comes to, like your Freddy's, your Jason's, for example. This figure definitely needed to have bigger, more rubber boots on, and I'm glad to see that they included that, complete with textured soles on the underneath. He doesn't have peg holes, sadly, but I don't really have any issues with Billy Chapman standing in the first place. He stands perfectly fine. So here's what you get when it comes to his posability. His ro head rotates back and forth. It's still essentially sitting on a ball joint. You probably can't even see that it's underneath that. Um, I do like that they gave you enough clearance between the beard and between his body that you can still very, very easily move his body back and forth. There are, yes, going to be still limitations that go along with it because, again, his beard, his hair, and his head are all one piece of plastic. So it does limit, yes, a little bit of what you can actually do with it. Still, you can look it up. You can still look the head down, and you can rock it back and forth with just a mild bit of rotation of the, the head all the way around just because, again, of the limitations there. 
Now the waist is just a straight with a swivel in the waist. This isn't using the newer retro cloth bodies. The same also means when you are moving the arms out, these arms I've still noticed are stiff on this figure. This arm is really difficult and I consider the idea of trying to heat this up because I don't want to bend it to the point of breaking it. But you can get the figure's arms to stand or hinge at least at a 90 degree angle bend. So that's good. Just ah, didn't really want to bend that as much as I did. The arms move forward. The arms move back. I did lose his hat. We'll go back to that in a second. It does have a single hinge on the elbow. You can rotate the hand all the way around. Then for his legs, his legs split out. A little more hindered because he's got a really tight fitted jacket. You can move the legs forward, you can move the legs back, swivel at the top, cut of the thigh, single hinge on the knee, and then lastly, we'll just roll up again the cuff on the bottom of his pants to show you that his boots are a nice, thick rubber boot. Um, it does limit a little bit of what you can actually do with it. You can hinge it back and forth, but there is sadly no ankle pivots on this guy. Getting the figure all straightened out. Retrieving, of course, his hat, as it should be. Put the figure with the hat on place in place. I did think when I first got this figure, would I ever really display him without the hat? I mean, technically, they could have just simply sculpted the hat to his head. But then on the other end of it, though, in case you decide for some reason you want to take the hat off, or just for the sake when it comes to his accessory counts, um, giving him only just the axe and then molding the hat to his head... I think would have then limited the amount of accessories he would have come included. I really think he could have come with a lot more. The box cutter, for example, the bow and the arrow. Of course, the axe is the axe is the staple when it comes to displaying him. He could have technically even come included with, uh, trying to think of other things. He could have even come with the strung up lights that he used in Iris Toy Shop. A bunch of things he could have really come included with. At the end of the day, yes, he only comes included with a hat. Yes, he only comes included with the axe, but he's still a decent looking figure, just slightly let down a bit by the muddy paint that they applied to his face. Billy Chapman does do some naughty things. Okay, he does a lot of naughty things over the course of Silent Night, Deadly Night. If you ask him, though, he thinks he's doing the right. After all, bad people in the world deserve to be punished. Punishment is good. Punishment is absolute. But I think he sort of lets that slip a bit because there are people in the movie that don't rightfully deserve to die. The bullies on the hill, yes, rightfully deserve to die. Denise and her boyfriend, probably not. They weren't doing anything wrong. Of course, they were fooling around down in the basement when she should have been looking after the, the after the kid. And yes, Mr. Sims. Mr. Sims probably didn't need to die. What was he doing wrong? He enjoyed the taste of a beverage, right? But I mean, I don't think that's enough that he should have died in the back room. And of course, Pamela didn't need to die either. The guy that looked like Larry from Three's Company. Yeah, he did. He needed, he needed to die. Totally needed to die. And the bullies, yeah, totally needed to die. Mother Superior, yeah, totally. But everything else, I think he sort of got a little... He let that run away, run away on him. Probably should have pulled those reins back a little bit, those reindeer reins, pulled them back a little bit. Not everybody needs to get punished. When it comes to this figure release, though, we get a nice release from NECA Toys with slightly naughtier paint applications. Admittingly, it's the one thing that really lets this figure down. If you look at the back of the packaging, for example, that is a good-looking Billy Chapman. And while it is using the same figure body, and it's using the same figure head, a lot of it does get lost because of the heavy, caking makeup paint that they used on his face. It's not to the degree of Herbert West, which I think still is probably one of the worst retro cloth figures. Good head sculpt, just really bad paint applications. Billy Chapman gets off a little luckier than that. He's not Herbert West level, but I do think he could have needed a much better paint job because underneath all that is a good looking Billy Chapman. The proof is in the pudding. You can see it on the back of the box here. Will this guy ever get a re-release? Is anybody really even asking for a re-release of retro cloth Billy Chapman? I know I am. If they already have the figure anyways, and they have re-released lots of figures with, with improved paint jobs, why not do the exact same for Billy Chapman? Give us a nice re-release. Maybe not this holiday season, but next holiday season. Re-release Billy Chapman. Or heck, give us a Billy Chapman ultimate figure. Then you could throw in all the accessories that he never got in this release, like the box cutter, the bow and the arrow. Me, even the strung of lights that he uses to kill that guy that looked like, I don't even know his name. He looks like Larry from Three's Company. Include that as well with the figure release. But again, this guy was released initially with the Scream Factory exclusive. 
but a lot of people are still lucky enough to pick this guy up later on in retail release. So again, I may consider picking up another one of these. I think the paint is probably going to be the exact same on the head sculpt, but I just think I'd like the idea of having a sealed version of Billy Chapman that I can put on my wall. Hopefully not on the same wall as those antlers. I, I, I know from the movie that that doesn't go well. If you have antlers on your wall, guaranteed someone, someone's going to get hung up on those. Either way, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Retro Cloth Billy Chapman, whether you picked him up with the Scream Factory release like I did, or if you managed and lucked out and found this guy in retail in the Clamshell release. Let me know, is the paint the same on the Clamshell release as this one, or if they've changed it and if they've improved it, and an even more reason that I would want to pick up that release as well. If you are new to the channel and you're also liking the content you're seeing, is there seeing? Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that bell notification. Going to be lots of stuff coming your way this holiday season. Of course, we're going to be doing regular videos, but sprinkled in there like a dusting of fresh snow. The snow you can still eat that hasn't been peed on by the neighbor's dog. There's going to be a lot of sprinklings of holiday related videos in there as well. So keep your peepers peeled to this channel at all times. Or if you have to go and do things with the rest of your life, just know Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when new videos will be popping up here. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>